Hello, everybody, and welcome to EX Area, a Shadowverse Evolve podcast presented by two of the English edition ambassadors for the game. I'm Ignidius, and with me is my handsome, effervescent <laughs> co-host, Different Fight. How are you? Hello, hello. <laughs> this this is this is always how these things start. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is, uh, I guess just quick uh, point of note to everyone listening mm. that in case you're watching this. Um, this is technically part two of episode one of our podcast. So for the That's for right. the Ignidia subs, don't forget to All check right. out part one of the episode as well. For sure. So the way this works is that EX area is split in two. The first half is over on Different Fights YouTube. The second half is over on my YouTube. And in audio form on Spotify, it's, it's just one big episode. So uh, it, it make it easy for you. But uh, the, the reason why is because there's so much to cover in Shadows yeah. Evolved. And Chris has a unique insight into the JP side of things. Meanwhile, I'm very much like super invested in the EN side of things. So it just made sense to put it up this way. Plus, it's a bit of fun. You know, you, you can cross over between both channels. But yeah, yeah I mean, uh, over on the first half, we talked a lot about, you know, upcoming JP events and our predictions for that. And now we're, we're going to talk a lot about uh, more of the English side as well as uh, a, few, a few mini games near the end, which is, which is a bit of fun. So, yeah. I it's mean, first be... of all, on the knock here, we have we have what has Igni played recently? I know for you, you've been playing you, uh, at your locals. You've been playing Forest right recently, and yeah, I've been the, been that... playing around with uh with a lot of like the Forest, you know, good old Loxus, and also just a bit of a bit of Sword too. You know, I am a Not Not fan. You know, it's mm -hmm. like one of my favorite leaders in in Digital Shadowverse too. Like that animation really stuck out to me from the very beginning. Well, I mean, for sure, and the fact that she got a new SP as well in, in Evolve, like it's, it's yeah. just premium to 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 be a not not fan right now. For me, I'm following in your footsteps, Mister Galmio man, because cool. in that sex, all I've been playing is Galmio. So, how are you feeling about the deck? I feel like it's. I think I it. I had a taste of what it was like in set eight when I went to Singapore <laughs> on that month. And I was like, I'm playing it now. I'm like, man, this is like hydrogen bomb versus coughing baby. And I'm a coughing <laughs> baby. I'm not there yet because I feel like um, with the additional uh, resources of both Zealot of Disdain and Sneer of Disdain, the deck gets so much more flexible. You can play Galmi mm. on five, for example, on curve. Uh, and not only that, but just the higher concentration of Omen cards means like stuff like your Apostle whiffs less, right? Like it's a huge thing in the deck building process that ends up affecting a lot of aspects of the play. So I'm, I'm like, it's fun. I'm having great fun with it. I'm glad that we finally get Filene, but I'm like, man, once we get Sneer, I'm going to I'm going to be in it on set 8. I'm just going to play this like nonstop. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, okay, yeah. I think Filene's addition definitely does that a lot because it's like one it's shuffling finally. Um mm. but I do think especially after Idolmaster comes out, it feels like Almu really kind of like comes into shape because you now have more tools, you know, especially what to do in the late game. Like having a 7 drop that basically like can push out your PDK and the Filene from deck yeah. just gives you so many nice ways to answer boards. So I feel like it's going to be I've been trying out I've been trying out a really tempo version where I'm like, I'm cutting Oracle and I'm like, okay, mm. I have the one drops from Fivene already. I have the Disciple. Well, maybe I'll try out putting a Bellringer and a Fina in there. Let's see what happens. At least I have a two drop play now that let, like doesn't just, uh, I'm, I'm not just passing on yeah, to. Because yeah, 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 yeah. you usually want to save your servant for later, right? So I'm like, okay. Maybe getting a, uh, so I've been testing that out and it's been all right. So yeah, uh, I've just been really enjoying that. I think set six is a great meta. I know that the elephant in the room is like, oh, Kuan is so, so strong, but I, th I still think there's um, en enough diversity that, that I'm having a good time. For sure. For sure. So I think it's definitely a good time. Like set six meta in general, I, I really, really enjoyed. I got like my uh, qualification. I remember back in, back last year. Um, hmm. Just a just exactly a year ago, actually, um, with Galmu in set six during the Kuan meta for like the 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 Kanto area championship, and it's kind of interesting talking to English players and them going like, actually, Galmu's not that good. It's like I think you might be you might be uh, just 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 puffing smoke out here, dude. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I, I got the I got the achievements to back it up. What are you talking about? Yeah, you got the receipts, man. I think it's also one of those things where it's an interesting like point of contrast is like how different regions and how different locals you mm -hmm. know, like from store to store how differently they play the game so you know that's also a factor i guess but for sure uh, like for example i know on the indonesian side people are like amata's fake hunter force mm -hmm. right that and i'm like yeah. what are you saying okay you gotta drop the list man like back it up like <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah it's pretty interesting i'm still a believer though i think Galmu. i think in set five it was like really undercooked but now i'm like okay i'm actually liking this deck now so yeah the addition of filene helps so much like 100 percent. being able to just, just like, destroying an engaged follower is massive man it's just huge so uh, anyway, that's what I've been. That's what I've been cooking. That's what he's uh, been jamming. 
I mean, listen, you're the you're the Galmu guy. I'm just taking notes <laughs> from the, the Grand Zen Master over here. So, hey man, it's, it's a good deck. Footsteps. It's a good deck. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot power of wife. <laughs> as a as, <laughs> as a dragon guy, I'm just I'm happy. I'm happy to play Galmu until uh, the new Zenitra comes out in English. Mm. So. <laughs> Let's do that. True, true, uh, true. Listen, I know Zenitra is bad, but she is my wife, so you know I'm a loyal man. <laughs> she is the one. That's right. Eventually, she'll come up. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of, like, as we mentioned, though, in the previous episode, or the previous half of this episode yep. on Chris's channel, we talked a lot about the JP news. Let's talk a little bit about the news over on the EN side mm -hmm. now. Uh, so, first of all, we have the launch of Bushy Supplies, which yeah. has been really recent, actually, over on the English side. And we have some unique products that, like, are, are completely brand new. Got some free run tie-ins, uh, which tie into Weiss, I believe. But also, yep. for the Shadowverse Evolve side, we have Mono and Viridia Magna Playmats. Look at that! Dude, these are, these are so sweet to the point that I've got... I've got a lot of Japanese players like in my DMs are like, when is this out? How do I get this? How do I buy this? Please tell me. Like, <laughs> it's just absolutely gorgeous. And the fact that they include the zones as well, it's like, oh, it's so good. Like, it, it's beautiful, but you can still use it to teach new players as well. It's like, this is perfect. Like, I, I just need this so bad. I really am happy about the zones. I feel like for some, like in Japan, they've not been doing the zone stuff much. And it's like, they, they did like the um, kind of like similar thing where it's like a boxed art, but then on, on these sides, it would just be like, borders for like the gp play mats but i'm really mm. glad that for english they're actually doing the zones like i think it's it's it adds a little bit to it the art is still like a full art undisturbed by any zones but like the, the little border around it is it feels like nicely you know nicely structured right yeah it is incredibly well laid out so i'm I'm definitely gonna cop it's like coming out in december right so mm. i expect the mono one to be sold out near instantly has one of the most popular characters in the entire ip yep oh so, yeah you know. It's very gonna exciting. be a big one. Uh, I actually got on the online store too, which is definitely very yeah, nice. True. Yeah, very, very exciting stuff for that. So and I, I'm excited to see what other stuff Bushy Supplies cooks up because it's a, a relatively new venture. Like the first uh, product for it is coming out in November with the the free run stuff and the Shadowverse stuff coming out early December. So it, mm. it's incredible new uh, like footing for for Bushy Road here. So it's exciting to see if they uh, if they expand on it further as we go forward. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like where it's gonna really end up at. So cool new venture. Mm -hmm. Definitely a cool little new thing that they're doing, and I, could, I hope every set for Shadowverse Evolve we get like a couple playmats to coincide with it, right? So this one's like oh, kind of to sure. coincide with set seven, and then for set eight they do a couple designs too, and they're picking out like pretty popular uh, designs so far. So I hope they they keep it up, honestly. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I'm definitely getting in, and I know that, like like you said, some people that aren't in the English side are e even they are interested. So it's like yeah, yeah this, this, they, they cooked, they cooked exactly. I mean, next up, the, the, the upcoming release for English, right, uh, outside of the Idolmaster stuff that it's, like, really eminent, is the Verdant Steel coming in November. Yes. Which is uh, very exciting. It's the the introduction of the Ma uh, Machina and Natura traits into Shadowverse Evolve, which was a very pivotal uh, flavor in, in Shadowverse Digital now coming into the physical version. Very exciting stuff. So, yeah, I believe there's uh, four different box toppers available. Yep, there they are. Yeah. Mm hmm And some of these cards uh, remain good for a very long time. Like Kudlock, I see that guy over there. <laughs> he ends yeah. up being good like much later. We got Lamonia, Cynthia, and Valdane as well. Valdane, bro. This is we gotta mm -hmm. we gotta get loose the panda back in back into Shadow Wars Silver, bro. Get him give him that ah. Valdane. <laughs> so it's a it's ten sleeves, I believe, that have uh, one of four of the arts. So yeah, pretty exciting stuff there. Uh, it's good. It's like perfect for your evolved deck. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you can just, like, just get, like, get four packs of these, like, from four boxes, and then you have, you know, they do have to be the same ones, but you can use them for a main deck, too. Hmm. Yeah, it's exciting. I love when there's, like, a fun little box topper that happens every time. Like, for example, in the Omens Eternal one, where you got the uh, anniversary tokens as well, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this is nice! It always yeah. just feels like a, an added little bonus, for sure. I like it a lot, for sure. And then, mm -hmm. of course, for Verdant Steel, too, we, we talked a little bit about this during the last part of the, yeah. um, the first part of the of the podcast but you know there are the booster pack changes as well so every box now will have an sl or higher per box and actually can have more than one which is very very cool mm -hmm. um and then but just note that the boxes are going to be a little have less packs it's going to be 12 packs instead of 16 but like apparently the the rates are also different so like you get an sl so yeah it's, it's nice yeah. it's definitely very good so make sure you get your pre-orders in two and then of course mm -hmm. just like with the past few sets we do have the um release tournaments coming up as well so for verdant steel the release tournaments will be from december 20th to january 20th so you get to celebrate christmas and new year together with <laughs> verdant steel 
That's right. It's a participation prizing. You get a random card pack that either has assembly droid, great tree, or repair mode promo tokens. And then, of course, the champion gets a promo Aenea with a set logo hot stamp, which, you know, it, it's beautiful. And Aenea, a very popular character in her own right. Yeah. Uh, not as popular as her sister Mono, I would say, but still mm. very popular in her own right uh, for Shadowverse Evolve. So dude, it's pretty exciting stuff. Foiled versions of these three tokens are going to go hard, dude. It's like, because you also need so many of each of them, right? Especially the trees. It's like I tree, usually come yeah. in with like 10 trees because you can sometimes have like four on board, five in EX area. And not to mention like uh, the new Natural Machinus in the in the upcoming uh, Japanese set also getting you a repair mode. So, you know, yeah. that's going to be useful for, for a long time to come. So make sure you look forward to that. Pull up to the release tournaments. That's, that's going to be very, very important. They're going to go hard. For sure. So we also have Promo Series 8 happening. I believe Promo Series 7 is is like... Either over or underway, but Promo Series 8 yep. is, uh, is coming up. happening in uh, October and November. Uh, each week, the champion will receive a super legendary promo alt art of Yuzuki Righteous Demon, which is a great card in, uh, in Abyss right now mm -hmm. uh, for the controlling variant, because you can also um, uh, ditch it from hand, so it's never a brick, I feel like, which is very nice. Yeah. Uh, and, and also, um, yeah, you, you get an alt art PR Hulking Giant, too, which is kind of nice, too. Uh, so yeah, also just like make sure the in the tournaments in your shops every time. Especially if you're a Runecraft player, um, mm. both Mirror of Truth and Golem's Rampage will be very important <laughs> in the future. True, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to miss out on that. Definitely oh, don't want to miss sure. out on that. Uh, over on the Glory Finder side, if you guys aren't aware, in, in, we have an English exclusive format called Glory Finder, which is like a singleton format where they uh, uh, it, it's a party game format with uh, three or more players, so three players, four players, yep. and uh, whoever's the last one standing ends up winning. It's it's good fun. Uh, and in in Glory Finder news, we have the Glory Finder Clash second season happening in November. To part participating, you get a promo series seven pack, and there's also a lucky draw where you can get a glory finder hot stamp D shift, so dimension shift, yep. which is still played. As uh, if you look over in the first half of this podcast, we were talking about the Japanese meta a little yep. bit. <laughs> we're still playing dimension shift, so you, know, you can always 100%. use hundred percent. Yeah, it's huge. This it. one's definitely big, and like dimension shift will have multiple promo printings. I guess like if you look at Japan, you can kind of see there's like a, a whole different art. For dimension right. shift over there, so it has Daria on it. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. So that one's gonna be definitely a very big one. So mm -hmm. I think that the rest of the information for um for the announcements, I guess, from the English side, we kind of talked about. Of course, just a reminder for people that maybe didn't tune into the first half, uh, mm -hmm. that there is a grand showdown happening very soon, and uh, Igni and Red Zone where we'll be commentating it. Yeah, over on September 21st, it's the Grand Showdown Los Angeles 2024. I'm going to be commentating it with Cal, as said. And it's like uh, another way to qualify for Worlds, but also it has some really cool prizing, like Alt Art Blazing Breath, Alt Art Gilnalese. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be an exciting one. And uh, the fact that we have like this major, major event running alongside BCS is uh, it, it's, it's hype. And uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing how players cook, especially because people... A lot of people assume like, oh, you just copy the JP meta and stuff. But actually, English players often they play differently, first of all, and they also mm. like can innovate on top of what's already been done. Like, uh, nobody would have expected Rose Queen to come second in Worlds, for example, if you looked at the JP meta. Yeah. So, like, to see seeing um, how these new innovations actually get to prove their metal at like a large stage is always an exciting time. So I'm excited. Absolutely. So definitely tune into the stream. Too, it's like Oh, like eight days? <laughs> yeah, at the, start, at the time of recording. So, yeah. I think this podcast will probably drop right before the Grand Showdown. So oh, this yeah, will be a very be, yeah. timely reminder for everyone to uh, <laughs> book the date in their calendar. Get ready. You know, if you have a locals that has like a uh, a screen that you can like play YouTube on, then, uh, well, at least I'm, I'm not sure what platform the stream is going to be on. But, you know, if, if your locals has a screen, you can ask them politely to put on the stream on on the on the big screen while you play your Shadowverse Evolve locals. I think it's always a nice little like mood booster to see, yeah, uh, you know, competitive sure. play in between rounds and whatnot. So yeah. it's going to be a big one. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's that's big, big hype for me personally. Yes. And I, and I guess uh, one other thing I want to remind people of, I don't know if you have the graphic, uh, it doesn't matter if you do, but I just want to say that there is a survey running for, for players mm. to feedback on, and uh, I, I want to boost, signal boost this as much as possible, so we mentioned it on the first half, I'll also mention it here. Uh, you can give your feedback to 
Uh, there's a player survey from September 7th to the 21st, uh, and you can also even stand a chance to win a box of Paragon of the Coliseum. There's no downside. Give your feedback, and then might actually shape the future of the game, yeah. uh, especially on the English side. So please, please do give feedback on that. It's a big, big deal if you want to see the health of the game improve with your feedback from directly from the players. It's, it's the most important thing. So 100%. It's super vital. So that's mm. been your reminders and a bit of like a refresher on a lot of the news and announcements as well. But Igni, now we take a look at the future or the English side. That is, of course, Idolmaster. That's so right. It's going to be the Dropping big focus. Really soon. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be very, very big focus, I think, going forward, just because it is, of course, the next set. But also, I mean, it was a very interesting, like, shaper of the meta over on, uh, on the japanese side when it was coming out and also mm -hmm. like now for english i think as well there's definitely a lot of key cards and the english side of the official x account has actually been revealing stuff and going over a lot of the cards i think we just kind of like take it and look at what's been revealed officially so far and uh use that as a opportunity to also just talk about what they've shown and also give our thoughts on a lot of these announcements as well for sure. I, I, we can also uh, like, uh, leverage your insight as well on like the Japanese meta mm. and how things worked out from Idolmaster there, and also like like the cards I'm most excited for personally because uh, it's coming out really soon, and <laughs> I'm uh, I'm looking forward to, to to it already. Especially um, if you if you're a forest enjoyer, particularly I'm like, man, I really want one particular card from this set. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly which one you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. So, all right, then let's uh, take a look at it. So we're going to just kind of go through the official X account here um, and go through the slides that they've put up here as well. So I guess just a quick refresher. There is like a special rules and terms for the Adam Master decks. They come with these magical items that you start the game with. So basically, mm -hmm. if your deck is fully Idol Master, so it's not like, you know, sword with Idol Master cards in it, but fully Idol Master, um, you get five of these magical items in your EX area. That basically are just like four cost spells that just heal your leader one. But you have a lot of cards in Idolmaster that use them for the lesson effects. So for example, the Uzuki Shimamura says you can pay less than one to give your leader three uh, defense, but you can only use hmm. this once per turn. So by less than one means you take one of these magical items from your X area and just remove it from the game, right? So you have a bit of a limited resource. There are some cards that give you back some of these magical items into your EX area, but you don't really play them that much. Usually you just work with the five that you have. So yeah. that's the cards like... that give them back are pretty low tempo, that's why. So like... Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you've got the three starter decks. You've got basically three types for Idol Master. You've got cute, cool, and passion. So you've got uh cute, which of course um features uh Uzuki Shimamura. You also get a leader card for this as well. And mm -hmm. you also have a bonus card pack inside of it where you get three of these cards, you know, of, of these, uh, what is it, 10, 11 different ones? I think it's 11 mm -hmm. different ones, right? They're idle signed as well, which is yeah. a big deal. So if you hit the, the main, you know, featured card, it's definitely like the, the biggest win that you can get. But overall, a lot of these cards do see quite a lot of play depending on which starter deck. It's quite nice to have these little explanations for each of the starter decks. So for example, for the cute one, you have Uzuki, who basically on fanfare, she's a seven cost that when you play her, she selects a cute follower that costs four or less and a cute follower that costs two or less in your cemetery, brings them back to the field and gives them plus one, plus one each. So then you've got Miho Kohinata, who is a two cost two, two that when you play her, looks at the top card of your deck and if it's cute, it goes to your hand. And as long as you have three cute followers on the field, she gets rush, which, you know, Uzuki makes that condition happen by default. And mm -hmm. then you've got Kyoko, who has ward, and then when you play her, she gives an enemy follower minus one, minus one for every cute follower in your field. So it's like minus three, minus three by default, just by playing it from Uzuki. And then if you pay for the lesson cost effect, you can also choose an enemy follower in the field and give it another minus one, minus one. So in case they have like a four, four, you didn't have enough, you know, that's like the final nail in the coffin, I guess. Yeah, that's really, really cool. I, I think, oh, sorry, that's really, really cute. I should oh, say. true, true, true. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to, to make sure, I'm not sure if we said it, like for the audio listeners, the set is coming out on October 11th, so just True. pretty pretty close, actually. So Yeah, we'll less than a month. Mm -hmm. So that is cute. Basically, it's like, overall, it's the more like healing and sustain type of deck. I'll just put it that way. 
And then cool is the one that really uh, dominated over the Japanese side. Oh, sort of cute, like cute and cool were the two at the very beginning that were super big. And then passion kind of like picked up midway through. Um, mm -hmm. So cute revolves around Shibuya Rin. So Shiburin, she's like, I, I think one of the most famous Idol Master characters. Oh, for sure. Everybody knows who that is. Like, even if you don't know anything about Idol Master, you've probably seen this girl before. Yep, <laughs> like, yep, yep, yep. And I'd say this, oh, dude, the promo pack from this one is definitely one of the strongest ones because there's so many hits. Like, all three of these are big hits. All three of these are big hits. Yeah, and yeah. these three are also big hits that, like, they're all played, basically. So it's, it's a very huge one. Um, the explanation for this one is actually very good. Um, so basically, the Shiburin herself... She is a 3 cost 3 3 that has Storm. I'm not sure which slide is better to pop up. We can do this one. So she's a 3 cost 3 3 that has Storm by default. So you can play her on 3 and just go face for 3, right? Yeah, that's already just like fine. <laughs> and on Fanfare, if she has, if you have 3 cool followers on your field, you select another follower with 3 attack or less on your field and you give that Storm as well. So that's like already 6 Storm damage. And then if you pay 1 play point and 1 lesson, she gets plus one attack as well. So that's now seven storm damage, right? Oh. And then you've got uh, Hojo Karen, Karen Hojo, who's a one cost three two, which is like insane in stats. But yeah, like, excuse me, <laughs> she has a debuff where at the start of your end phase, if you have no other cool followers on the field, she deals herself one damage, right? So if you play her on one for tempo, she will be like a three one essentially, which is still mm. pretty good. And then if you pay three play points and one lesson, she gives each follower in your field plus one attack. So you can see where the aggro is coming from for cool, right? Yeah, so cool is definitely much more like a board flood make guys go face deck compared to cute, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And then you've cute got... seems much more controlling, for sure. Yeah. You've got um, the third card here, which is uh, Kamiya Nao. So Nao is a five cost three, three. So the three attack still qualifies for Shibudin's buff. And she says, on Fanfare, you look at top five, choose two cool followers that add up to four cost and put them, uh, you play them, and then the rest goes to the bottom of your deck. So you basically, like the dream combo is basically what's pictured here, where the Nao plays you the Shibuya Rin and the Hojo Karen, and you basically get yourself a bunch of storm damage. And if you have extra play points, then, you know, you can use Hojo Karen to like buff up everything. Or, or also just like activate um, the other lesson from uh, Shibuya Rin as well to get an extra storm damage and it's like just super aggressive. And you get all of this yeah. in the trial deck. Yeah, I mean like the fact that the trial decks are like kind of playable out of box with competent like game plans and win conditions. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about this earlier as well. It just makes it like such a good entry point for people into Shadowverse of all, especially if they're like Idolmaster fans like... I just love the fact that there's a good starter product. Like, it makes me feel so good. <laughs> 100%. It's just so easy to recommend the game to people. Yeah. For sure. Especially the cool mm. starter deck. It's like, mm. it's so good. And then we have the passion ones. Those are the third time, which is uh, centered around Honda Mio. And uh, these are the hits that you can get from the starter deck as well. So, this one has, like, I think the most unique play style. So, basically, Honda Mio herself is a 6, six, uh, six cost 5 5 that is a. You know, they're all sword craft technically, so you can play them in sword as well. Similar like how Uma Musume was as well. But she mm. has Rush and on Fanfare looks at top two of your deck and lets you summon a passion follower from among them and bury the other one so it goes to your cemetery. And if you pay two extra play points and pay two lesson, she basically gets to do that effect again. So looks at top two and summons a passion from among them, buries the rest, right? So what can you summon from that? Well, you've got um, Akane you know here that's kind of like covered up by the text but she's an eight cost seven seven with storm that you can randomly oh. bring out from the top of your deck and if you pay three lesson and discard two passion cards on fanfare she deals six damage to each enemy following the field and draws two just like <laughs> it's pretty wow. like if you do pull that off it's pretty insane right yeah this this deck seems like it's it's quite like wombo combo but it has a high ceiling which, which makes it fun yeah and then if you want, I mean, it's just nice that the the three different types like have such like drastically different playstyles. Yeah, like, right. There's something for everyone. Yeah. And you get to like because you get to mix the classes together when you play a collab mm. title. They kind of use a lot of like different thematic effects too. So you have some of the the sword out of master cards. They still have like the buffing and whatnot of like typical sword cards, I guess, or like searching yeah. your deck for things. Um, and then you got like Ico here as well that's featured. That says like you engage three passion followers on your field so like you can play early game stuff 
and then use Aiko, engage three of them, and can be also including herself, and summon a passion follower from your hand, so you can summon the, the Mio Honda, and then it goes back to your hand at the end of the turn, right? So, you know, you can reuse the fanfare, let's say on turn four you can play Mio, and then if the Aiko doesn't get taken out, you use that effect again on turn five, and then on turn six, you just play the Mio for her six cost. So you're just like getting these <laughs> random cards off the top all the time, and you can just randomly just roll an Akane and just beat your opponent up with a seven damage storm. The more you're talking, the more I think Passion might be the one that I'm gonna get. Like that sounds like <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. Bro has to gamble. <laughs> this is this is the way of life. <laughs> I love it. So there's a lot of leader cards as well. Uh, for Force, you've got Aiko uh, Takamori. Then for Sword. We have uh, Totoki Aidi. We've got uh, this one's very popular for Rune Kawashima Mizuki. Mm -hmm. I have a friend that's like literally he loves her so much he started evolve just for her. Oh wow! And he like there you go. I mean you love to see it. That's what collab. That's what collabs are for. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Now this one's uh, pretty popular as well. Tsujinakari. Uh, she's also a very strong Dragoncraft card that we'll take a look at a bit later too. We got a Dragoncraft leader too, and oh, I think the most popular leader I'd say is a. Uh, you know, Miyaska for Abyss. This art also is just very good. It's so dynamic. It looks amazing. Yeah. yeah. I always like like the close up hand, you know, it's like grabbing the camera. <laughs> yeah, foreshortened. Yeah, it looks great. And then for Haven, we have uh, Yorita Yoshino as well. So you got a little bit for every class, which is definitely very nice. Mm -hmm. And then you've got these like little features they have for the different cards. So yeah, I've been doing it for a lot of the cards, like if you as you scroll up through the feed, like got tons of these yeah so we can take a look it's mostly legendaries so we can kind of mm. like discuss our thoughts on them so first up we have the forest craft two cost three one maikawa miku or miku maikawa you know it's kind of always awkward <laughs> like reading japanese names in, in right, opposite right, right. yeah so yeah, yeah. she has strike uh she chooses an enemy follower and deals a two damage which for two cost is pretty cool because for one cost and one lesson you can give her storm <laughs> hello excuse me it's like oh, that's she is a cute, so she does go into uh, you know the more sustain based deck, but gives it more of an early game option. I feel like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like one of the things about it is that um, even though it is a cute card, it is also a forest card, right? So if yeah. you're playing a more aggro based forest, you could still slot Miku Maiko, and that's one of the things I really like about the way Shadow Resolve does collabs is that like you can always like think about okay, do I play this in an IMAS deck or do I play it in the class that it belongs to? Yeah. 100%. So it's a pretty cool card. You definitely saw quite a bit of play at the very beginning as well. Uh, this one's very interesting. Got a little spin animation in here for uh, Igarashi Kyoko. So this for is one of the... Editor for sure. Yeah, 100%. Dude, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're putting in that work. But um, her base form is a 7 cost 6, 7, which is a cute. And she has ward. And on fanfare, heals your leader 3 and draws 2 cards, which is like already pretty good, I would say. Mm, yeah, like as a late game control option, you can definitely see the how this plays into the cute playstyle as well. But yeah, it has yeah, an evolve yeah. as well. That's even even more nutty. Yes. So the evolve form, I'm gonna let it whoop, do a little little twist. <laughs> so she becomes a seven eight that still has the ward, and uh, on evolve selects an enemy follower and engages it or refreshes it. So basically Ooh. gives you an attack target. Especially with a 7-8 body, you know, you can definitely just swing into it. Or you can refresh a ward and, like, your guys can go face. Yeah. Right? Isn't that a thing you can do? Yes, you can indeed. As long as it doesn't have aura, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. And then she also gains the effect that during your turn, she doesn't take damage. So you can swing into things without any worry. And she will stay at 8 defense with a ward, which is pretty That's annoying to take out. And it's the fact that the evolve only costs 1 as well is, is really cool. Yeah, going from, so basically like 8 cost, you know, it's kind of like similar to like an Aegis, I guess, for Sword. And I mean, you can also save your Evolve point for this if you know that you need the the, the, the tempo recovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. It's like whether you want to play this in cute, but this card in particular saw play in Control Sword. So this set, Control Sword, really popped up a lot because you can give this aura through a spell, and then she's like... Uh, armor of the Stars, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's super annoying if you give her aura. That is awesome to think about. Yeah, Armor of the Stars on Kyoko Igarashi is crazy. Right. Wow, can't take damage, and the armor also gives it aura and increases its defense. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's, like, a, that's a huge... <laughs> oh, man. Okay. It's pretty I, hard I see to the see. vision. I see the vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're, if you're a control player, Sword is definitely a nice class to uh, play around with in this coming set. So next up, 
we have the rune Mizuki Kawashima. So she's a 7 cost 7 7 that actually we just uh, showed in the previous part. She sees him mm. playing Vincent Rune over, uh, you know, in set 11 format. But That's what I love about this. It's like a lot of these cards are still good, like way, way into the future. Which is right. Cool. It's like yeah, some yeah. of them are actually they get good in the future sometimes. Yeah, right? yeah. They become good. Like <laughs> they gain value. Her side, she's pretty interesting. She's a cool um, and she can engage herself to deal three damage to each enemy leader and enemy follower in the field. But if you have at least nine cards with different base costs in your cemetery, it becomes seven. And oh. you, can, you can kind of see why this is good in Vincent now, right? Right, because that's already doing that. And the fact that you can activate it immediately the turn you play it is just like a huge like control tool for, for late game in Rune. Yeah, yeah. seven damage is a lot. Yeah, and it hits face too. Like that's actually kind of big. Right. <laughs> If you can, if you pair this with Vincent, it's seven from from Mizuki and then twelve from Vincent. That's nineteen of the damage that you need yeah. to do to phase. <laughs> Pretty good. You're probably chipping one damage somewhere along the way, right? Surely, if you're not, then like, bro. <laughs> pretty good. It's honestly, yeah. pretty good. So yeah, yeah. she's a pretty cool. Like, I think in cool herself. In the deck itself might not see that much play just because it's like, you know, it's a very fast deck, but in Rune, this is a very good card. That's the thing, like, I, I think obviously they try to to give, like, the 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 trait to the character that embodies it, right? It would be weird if they put cute on Mizuki Kawashima, right? But, mm -hmm. like, so so some of them are gonna kind of go against the starter deck archetype, but the fact that you can still play them in the classes they belong to is totally fine. 100%. And then we have the dragon one. This is one of the best dragon legendaries in the set. Akari. Yeah, I've Tsujino. been excited for I've been excited for this card since for since it came out in Japanese. I was like, <laughs> I, I saw the effect of this and I'm like, I need it immediately in my dragon deck. Like it's so strong. Especially Sorry, I, just like, I I got too excited. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like especially because in oh. the app we didn't have these cards. So this is like a brand yeah, new sure. playing field yeah, for yeah, yeah. like actual Shadowverse players from digital too. But mm. Akari is really good. She's a 4 cost 4 5 that has ward and the cute trait. And on Fanfare, she heals your leader 3. And if you have the 10 maximum play points, she also deals 3 damage to each enemy leader. And whenever she would take at least 5 damage, you gain a play point. Which is like, she's so annoying to be on the board because if they like deal her 5 damage to take her out in one swing, she immediately ramps you a play point. But you can also, like, if she, you can play her on curve, right? And then next turn, just, like, trade her into something, and you got yourself a play point out of it, too. Which is, like, it's just oh, so versatile. God. Yeah, and the healing, it's, like, the healing, so... dude. Dragon has, like, no healing. <laughs> At least, like, Galmu doesn't. Galmu doesn't. No, no, no. I mean, like, in general, right? Like, since the Shenlong Restrict, I'm like, man, I need to stay alive. I don't right? want to be running Super Creek out here. Yeah. Akari Tsuchino is two play points cheaper than Super Creek, mm -hmm. and she does all that? Like, come on, give that to me, like, immediately, please. Like, I'm, I'm begging. She's also just very good in the cute archetype, too, because cute is a sustaining long game yeah, style yeah, archetype. True. So you get to the 10 max play points, even in cute as well. So she's very good in both decks, in, or, like, I in mean, both it's, classes. It's modally, right? Because in the mid game, you just play this to, to survive to the late game, and in the late game, you get in, increased benefits as well. Like, it's just, like, you can't, you can't lose. Yeah. Exactly. So mm -hmm. definitely a very good card. Actual stonks. So mm -hmm. big fan. Then we have for Abyss, Sachiko Hoshimizu. So she's a two cost three three cute trait uh, that on fanfare deals two damage to your leader. And while your leader's defense is 10 or less, the good old vengeance, uh, she gets Storm and Bane. Oh. Okay, it's also, it's, okay, that is literally Vengeance from Digital, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's also, it is also just a very, uh, a relatively cheap Sanguine activator for, mm -hmm. for Evolve as well, which is fantastic with a bunch of other cards you could pair this with. Like, um, I, I don't know if this is something that happened, but like, if, if I'm playing like a super high risk deck, I could be like, okay, uh, turn six, I'm going to Sachiko Koshimizu, uh, get myself to... To the to the ten flip defense, and then I'm gonna play a uh, uh, dark general. On the yeah, same turn right. and then just go phase for like an absurd amount of damage. Like that's that's a lot of fun for sure, for sure. It's easy to combo her because of her low play cost and the fact yeah. that even if you play her on two, like going first the three three body, that's like pretty annoying to take care of. Oh, for sure, for sure. Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I really like this one personally. It, it, it's like not a lot of text, but it, like you can immediately see the implications that it has, right? You like, see the vision. Like, yeah. 
Oh, this one I, I definitely want to talk about. Kaede. So, Takagaki Kaede. She's a 5 cost, 3 5. That is a cool trait. So, she, she did see play in like the more mid range style cool decks. Um, hmm. But she has Ward. And she says, You on fanfare, choose an enemy follower in the field and banish it just straight up. Like That's on huge. 5. Unconditional. Yeah. Unconditional. And at the start of your end phase, if your leader's defense is 5 or less, she heals your leader five and draws a card. Okay, okay. Like, she does have a lesson effect, which can be used only in the Idol Master class, which is, you know, mm. you pay a lesson, you pay one play point, and she gets aura, which is like, you know, she's banishing stuff, she's got ward, she's healing you, she's and she carries aura. Yeah. But in Haven, in Ward Haven, this card is amazing, right? Like, Ward Haven's already been picking up after set six. This is basically just support for it. Does it often get that that start of end phase effect up in in from your experience? I've seen it save people. Like I think there was a GP where uh, somebody was playing. I can't remember if it was Ward Haven or if it was Cool Idol Master, but they actually like they got chipped down to five or four, and then this gave them the comeback to like stabilize. Because not only are you healing five, you're also now having a Ward body to hide behind, which is just a very big recovery kind of like comeback card. You know what this card reminds me of? It reminds me of Digital's Elgania. <laughs> yeah, true, true. It kills a thing, it heals you, and it draws you a card. That's Elgania, baby. I know this guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's she's here. She's here ahead of time. But yeah. And then we have a couple of the uh, the Neutral. neutrals. So there's basically like the units are are the neutral spells. We have new generations. Which is a pretty funny card. It's a 10 cost 5-5 five, five, that is all three traits. So it's cute, cool, and passion. And when you would play this card, if you banish three cute, three cool, and three passion cards from your cemetery, it costs nine less. So because it was a one cost 5-5 five, five, with Storm, Bane, and Ward. I guess this is a good opportunity to bring it up. So, like, the Idol Master is sort of split into these three categories, but this mm. card just shows you that you can indeed mix and match. Um, yeah. You might have less, like, individual synergy, but you get, like, this payoff at the end that you can you can use the big boss monster. Yeah, you're usually, like, building the deck to use these base, ba this big uh, boss, right, boss right. monsters. Uh, I feel like it's one of those things where in the early to mid game, you'd be like, you're, you're questioning, why did I do this? And then when the boss monster comes out, you're like, oh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, like, there's like... less... There's less synergy as you build up to it, but when, yeah. when you land it, it's it's great. It's always so surprising, too, because it's like, they'll start off playing just, like, cool stuff early, because that's, like, the aggro game plan, and you're like, oh, man, I'm playing against cool, damn, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. And they suddenly start playing cute cards, it's like, oh, maybe they're playing, like, the cool, cute hybrid, which was also, like, a pretty popular deck. And then suddenly the passion cards start to come out, and there's, like, some good generic passion cards, and you're still thinking, okay, this is probably just, like, mostly cool, with, like, a little bit of, like, healing in it, and then, bam, new generations comes down, and you're like, wait. What? <laughs> what? Why am I taking five damage? What this has Ward and Bane too? It's like <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. But a little scary. Yeah. We do have There's another one. The other, we have the a other new wave. wave. Mm -hmm. So this one is also cute, cool, and passion. And it's a six cost seven seven that on fanfare lets you less than five. So use all five of the uh, the the magical items you start with to destroy each enemy card on the field. So amulets, mm -hmm. followers, doesn't matter. Everything's got to go. It's a big investment, though. Five lesson. That's like all your magic items that you got from the start of the game that you're immediately using just for this. It means yeah. you also have to not use any lessons leading up to this. Yeah. So I do. I do prefer um, new generations a lot more between the two neutral mm -hmm. ones, but still pretty cool. I mean, it's it's basically like a Themis in a way. Yeah, a Themis on a stick, right? Well, can't, yeah, can't, with a seven seven. Not really anything wrong with that. We did mention there are cards that give you back magic items, but the problem with them is that they're not cute, cool, or passion traded and yep. they also are a pretty big tempo loss so like it's, it's tough to like, you really have to think about how you want to use your items in the most efficient and, and, and effective way so exactly all right so then moving forward we have uh takamori aiko so she's another one of the evolving ones she is passion trait a three cost two two that on fanfare looks at top three reveals a passion card from among them as it's your hand and puts the rest at the bottom so a searcher always good to have mm -hmm. and if you evolve her then she does a little spin <laughs> and becomes a 3-3 that summons a passion follower that costs 3 or less from your hand for free it's pretty sick actually yeah yeah and uh I wonder what the best card to 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 
like interact with that actually is i'd have to like look through the entire passion card list and see. yeah passion didn't catch I, on as i hard. know that there are passion cards that activate effects based on how many passion cards are on the field so like that yeah. could be a thing like you play a passion card on the turn before then you play Ico, then you stand out another passion card hmm. uh, I, I think i see one right here it's like called yumi aiba uh if there are at least three passion followers on the field deal two damage to an enemy follower like that's pretty that's pretty cool that, that, yeah that right <laughs> So yeah. she definitely has a lot of like use just because she can like tempo out a card. Um, mm. But I definitely, in terms of passion, I definitely want to see the English side cook a bit more because I feel like that's one of the archetypes that the Japanese side kind of like left a little bit like not explored enough compared to cute and cool. Mm -hmm. I see. So especially because after Idol Master we had um, you know Natura and Makina come out right after, and a lot of people were really excited for that. So whereas you guys can kind of like really pick up on where Japan left off on, and then continue on so i think next episode of the podcast we can kind of like take a look at some of the lists from like the gp in japan and like the idol master list that did really well during that time and then like sure. kind of like see you know give the viewers a chance to see what they want to build on as well mm -hmm. yeah right. it'd be really cool like that's one of the strengths of the fact that you know en can kind of learn from jp and like you said build on top of it like if if passion ends up like like, like, is it the kind of vibe that passion was starting to pick up near the end, and then like, yeah, it, it wasn't enough time. Yeah, yeah. Because then so it like just went doing new meta. There, yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool. So there's a bit of an example how to use uh Takamori Aiko here. So you can uh, play uh, Risa Matoba here, who's a three cost two two that looks at top three and summons a Imas Cinderella Girls follower that costs two or less from among them, and the rest goes to bottom. And then the target could be Haruyuki, which is a two cost two two that. As long as you have Risa Matoba on the field, gets plus one, plus one, and Storm. So you can see, like, with Passion, everything really connects together. There's a lot of these, like, card-to-card -card synergies. I mean, there you go. I was just asking what Aiko Takamori could work with. It's, like, literally the next slide. So yeah. there you go. Thank you, social media, answering my question. Yeah, right. And then, oh, this is my personal, like, at least from Cinderella Girls, I'm pretty sure she's, she's my favorite, um, which is uh, Shiki, Ichinose Shiki. So she's a very interesting card too. She's of the cute trait. So she's a five cost mm. two five that on fanfare looks at the top three cards of your deck. And then was it three or five? I can't tell because it's very blurry. Do they have an example thing? Yeah, it's look at top three cards of your deck. You may put a card from among them into your EX area, put the remaining cards into your cemetery, activate, engage this card, discard a card, select an enemy follower on the field and deal five damage to it. So, mm. yeah. so yeah, yeah. you mainly used her um, for the discard to deal something five. So even in Kuan, some people used it because as this slide kind of shows, uh, of course, it does coincide with building up your cemetery of spells. So you get to take yeah. out stuff on the on the board while uh, searching out like anything into your EX area and burying other stuff. So if you bury a bunch of spells, it kind of like turbos your way to a dimension shift. And then that's she... true. Yeah. And, and the discard also like helps with the spell chain, too. So like you're just you're just like Essentially, you get three spell chain in with this one card in yeah. the ideal scenario. And then when you evolve her, she chooses a card in your EX area, and you deal damage equal to its cost to your leader. So, you know, it's definitely a, a big one. But you can play that card for zero after that. <laughs> so you deal 12 damage to yourself with D-Shift? Yes. <laughs> I, I notice on this graphic it says, play for free, gain another turn. They're excluding, they didn't say, deal 12 damage 12, 12 to yourself. Damage and to yourself. <laughs> That's yeah. very funny. It is It is yeah. pretty funny that they, they put it like that, but hey, it, it costs zero, right? It's like, at the end of the day, your life is just a resource if it means you can win the, the, the during the extra turn. So true, so true. But yeah, so it's definitely very nice. And uh, helps to build the board too, which is very nice for um, Uzuki. So mm -hmm. she definitely saw, like, uh, she definitely saw play in both Rune and uh, and the Elemaster class. So and I think she might come back in the future as well. I mean, literally, whenever anything can, like, cheat out a big expensive card, I, I get, like, more excited for it. Like, right. just, there's so many, there's so much potential for it, you know? Exactly. And then the final card that they revealed so far on the social media is uh, Hisakawa Nagi. So she was also played in Sword. So she's a 4 cost 4-4 four, four of the Passion trait. And mm. she lets you banish two 1 cost cards from your cemetery. And then you choose up to two of the following. And the first one is you select an enemy follower on the field and destroy it. Second effect is you do two damage to each enemy leader. And the third one is draw a card, discard a card. So if you want to like, you know, balance this between like cycling through your cards and getting rid of your opponent's board, you can do that. Or you can just focus 
solely on doing damage and stuff like that. Oh. And then for one play point on one lesson, she also gains rush as a 4-4, which is pretty good into like That's just trading stuff out. Oh, I feel like Swordcraft right now, at least in my local area, they play tons of one drops. They got the um yeah. the servant of um usurpation for one. Like that's a huge one. Mm. You got the you got the, the you obviously still play bell ringer. Yeah, like quick blader um, if you have that and like Yeah, like I feel like this you could you could probably activate this on four if you have the ideal curve. That's kinda exciting. Especially going first where like, you know, you might not have like the optimal evolved targets mm -hmm. because you don't have evolve points. It's a pretty good card to just like play on curve. Oh yeah, and especially because you also have Fina to just pull the one drops for you. Like yeah. you just you just curve into this. Like that's kind of crazy. Yeah. So I remember she was playing like a one or a two of in Sword. She was yeah. she was quite good. That is all of the uh, reveals so far for uh, Idol Master over on the social media for Shadowverse Evolve. So make sure you check out the official X account um, and stay up to date with all the reveals as we approach the release date on October 11th. So well, be before we move on, to this, I kind of want to ask you, like outside of the ones that they revealed on social media. What's like one or two cards that you know, you know from the Japanese meta that you're like, oh, this is going to really, really be a huge impact? Well, if uh, if you're going to ask that, let me just pull up the they have a link to the website somewhere here. Let me let me get that real quick. Yeah, it's at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So this is this is the one that like like you Fumika, she is the support so for so Galmi, <laughs> actually. So good. So she's really good in cool and Galmu. Like in my opinion, I actually bought six copies of her when when the set released in Japan because I knew I was gonna use her in both decks. So she's a seven cost four four that searches your deck for three cost and a one cost follower and summons them. And it doesn't matter what they are if they're dragon, if they're eye mass, anything that's three cost and one cost oh, is God. fine. And the other effect is only applicable to eye mass, but it's really good in cool. Whenever another eye mass Cinderella girl's follower is put into your field. You select enemy follower and deal it two damage. So this procs twice, right? You get four damage oh, on the board damage. with a four yeah. four in stats and two cards on the on the field as well. So it's like it's so good because this can search you like PDK plus a Filene, for example. And the Filene searches the spell because the fanfare comes into play because you're on seven play points. So the synergy is really good. It also works really well with like the um, Gamu package itself, too. So mm -hmm. if you have an evolve point, you know, you can also commit into the uh what was it? The the apostle was it the three cost? A three cost is the apostle, yeah. Yeah, so you can get like the apostle and also like the one cost enabler, uh, the self damager, and then you just get you you know you get the whole thing going. So it's a really good kind of play, especially if you're not ready to go for game or you don't want to commit the turn for like a forte evolve. Um, it's really good to just kind of like win back tempo. So I think it's so this good is too because well, like like as dragon, like you if you, if you spend like the early game ramping too hard, sometimes you can like run out of resources in your hand, and you just get Fumika like off the top. It's like okay, I instantly yeah. build a board. <laughs> like it's so so good. It's so good. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you got two passionate dragon mains <laughs> on on the on the pod just talking I, I was, about. I was looking at Sagisawa Fumika like since it was in Japanese, and I'm like, I need this so bad. Even in rogue decks, it's good. Like it it. <laughs> Like, as a Zernitra fan, you know, Zernitra costs three, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. I mean, if, obviously, if I'm trying to win, I'm just going to, like, use this to pull PDK. But, like, like even for... As a four-fun silly deck, I'm like, I'm going to put Fumika in there, like, so fast. Like... 100%. You, you can't even blink before I do it. Like, it's it's so exciting. Yeah. So, I think that's, that's my biggest, like... Uh, I think by far the card that I use the most. Like, I... I built all the Idolmaster decks and I played a lot of uh, Cool as well because it was just best I can format basically um, next mm -hmm. to Kuan. But it's um, especially especially Fumika, I used so much because oh, cool. of Galmu. Yeah. So, uh, for, good time. for me, I have a few that I, I have, but I don't think there's graphics for it. So I guess we can just do okay. the, the, the two cam. Like, it's like they're not out and they haven't been like officially revealed in English yet. Mm. Obviously, no one effects though because it's been in Japanese for ages. But, uh, the one one of the ones I'm most excited for is Anastasia as as uh, yeah forest like so good in puppets like the fact that it can build an entire board you can combo it with um uh uh, uh the small girl who gets massive stats and has storm what's her name it's, uh, uh Sukuna that's the one <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's 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 so so good uh and the fact that it gets like so much usage in, in many different forest decks as well like especially when puppets comes out too it's a huge huge part of it like i love that like an elf song as well to like buff an entire board yeah anastasia very very much one that i'm looking forward to another one is the uh, abyss uh, spell the uh, 
like last daylight or something like, something like that like um yeah i don't know the official the translation they're going to go with in english but the yeah. that removal spell is fantastic as well oh like, it's like super generic it's played in so, mono it's played in bat it's like <laughs> and the fact that it's two costs as well means that it works with rose queen too right so yeah also one, another one that i'm really really excited for uh and yeah um those are the two that I'm I'm most looking forward to. Other than Fumika, I'm not, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm most looking forward to Fumika yep. number one, and the next one is like I need to get that Anastasia so I can. Anastasia is so and big. I'm so excited for it, yeah. But yeah, yeah, in general, a very high impact set, and I'm personally really happy that it is a uh, just great starter product for people that I can just recommend. Like as an mm. ambassador, you know how much easier our jobs get when people ask us how do I get the Shadow Burst Evolve, and I can just point to like an affordable product and be like. This one, <laughs> have fun. Like, like that's it. Like it's yeah. it's such a good entry point. And if you have friends as well that are like, what do I get into Shadow vs. Evolve? Uh, and then you, you can just like like same thing. Like, hey, new products coming incredibly soon. That's that's a, a huge value. So yep. go for it. Literally just direct them this way, and that's that's all they need to know. Like it's it's love honestly to, to it. it's the best case scenario. So I think mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's definitely a set you can't sleep on as well because there's so many impactful cards in the Adam Master. Mm -hmm set and it's like not just the Adamaster decks but so many meta defining cards that will be played in these classes like you mentioned like Anastasia, Fumika like you're going to be seeing them for a long time you're really going to I mean, be seeing them for a long time for me it's sort of like the best of both worlds where Isle Master fans go oh my gosh it's a affordable entry point that I can just buy and I can play my Isle yep. Master Oshis in Shadow vs. Evolve but for me similar to the Yuma set it's like oh I can start getting attached to the characters from this collab as a Shadowverse fan. Like, because of Uma, I'm an Oguri Cap stan. And I think, <laughs> uh, I think because of this, I'm going to be a Fumika stan very shortly. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. definitely uh, a good kind of, like, pathway for both ends, right? For sure, for sure. And I really love the fact that the Twitter is also... Uh, the official account is... Like showing like combo lines and stuff to, to get yeah to right because you know a lot of people who play Isle of Master maybe they they're not like they're not like big card gamers so the fact that they can see like oh, the synergy like just is presented to them in such an informative way it's like yeah. oh I can do that that sounds 100%. fun let's do it hundred you know, percent yeah. definitely a big uh, yeah. fan of that as well so looking forward to uh, you know next next uh, episode we'll talk more about like the really like getting the 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 nitty gritty of mm. the meta stuff and all that kind of uh, all those topics for the English community as well but overall gonna be a very exciting time it was a very fun meta that i definitely recommend for people to look forward to as well no, but... i'm just excited I'm, I'm just generally happy because like set five was such a fun mm. meta i'm having a good time in set six despite some people being a little salty at kuon that's fine uh but then <laughs> Isle master coming out and i'm like okay that's also gonna be an exciting meta it's just a great few months for me <laughs> like, yeah, yeah yeah i'm, at a, I'm at having the time of my life right now 100 percent, 100 percent. speaking of having a good time i think we have a pretty fun little segment coming up next that uh um, ah, yes i think you might have to like run through some brief explanation so we're gonna have a little bit of a a guess the card uh segment here where Absolutely. basically alternating between episodes it's going to be a different person guessing the card that the other host gives them so, Essentially, yeah, one of us selects a card that the other person has to ask questions to get clues about mm -hmm. on, like, what the card is. And you guys can keep track in the comments what our score is <laughs> after every episode. Yep. It'll be uh, a fun little activity that way. And, uh, just, you know, inject a little bit of levity in this, you know. Uh, it, it's easy to get into the weeds of, like, uh, you know, meta and events and stuff. But at the end of the day, uh, it's also just a, a fun game, like... To, to communally experience in, in many different ways. So mm. uh, in this sense, let's let's just get right to it. I've already selected the card this time around yep. for you to try and guess. I would okay. like you to ask me your first question. This is sort of like, do you know Akinator? It's like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm All ready. right. Go for it. Is it out in English? It is. Okay. Is it Dragon? Just Craft? out in English. Just out. Is it Swordcraft? No. Is it Dragoncraft? No. Is it neutral? Nope. Forest? It is indeed forest. Nice. Okay. Is it a follower? It is a follower. Uh, does it cost five or less? It costs five or less. Does it cost... Let me think. Does it cost two? Nope. Does it cost four? Higher than two. Higher than two. Does it cost four? Lower than four. So it costs three. <laughs> three cost Forest Craft follower, follower that just came out. That just came out. 
that in just English. came out in English. What? Oh, I have to think about this. Is it a I'll legendary? Hint, it's not a legendary. Is it a uh, I'll give you a hint. It was a funny, a funky little card that some players in digital had like fun memes and, and fan art about. Fun memes and fan art? From... Is it from... Okay, let, let's really narrow it down. Is it from Paragons of the Coliseum? It is from Paragons of the Coliseum. It's from Paragons of the Coliseum and it's a three cost that had memes about it? <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Is Although, it... to be fair, in, in digital, it came out quite a while ago, so it's like, you know, it's easy to forget, but yeah, there was, there was some, some jokes about it when it came out. Is it Hunter trait? No. Oh, it's not? It's not Hunter. Oh, what else is in Inset 6 other than Hunters? Dig through your brain. This is going to be a harder game for you, I feel like, because it's been so long for you since Inset 6 came out in Japan. Yeah, it's, it's been over... Over a year and a bit. Uh let's I'll see. I'll give you a hint. It's uh it's it's not human. It's not human. Mm. Wow, this is actually harder than I thought. Three cards? It's a hard game, yeah. That's is it gold card. gold rarity? I'll just tell you, it's bronze. The bronze. Is it the monkey? It's the monkey! Yay! He got it! <laughs> the brand somehow helped the most. Mallet yep. monkey. All right, let me let me pop it up for the people watching. Yeah, sure thing, sure thing. Mallet <laughs> monkey uh, in digital summons another mallet monkey, and in Evolve, he does much the same thing. Funky little guy that just summons a bunch of himself with a giant hammer, then hits you in the head because he has Storm. Mallet monkey. And you know, I thought it'd be fun to pick one that just came out. Uh, yeah, I like it. <laughs> that's, that's very good. Damn, that's you got I, it. You got it in less guesses than I thought. The game is very difficult for you because you have like eleven sets to contend with. Yeah, so. yeah. That's why immediately I was like, my first question I think will always be, is it out in English? Because that immediately English, just like yeah. cuts the pool in half. Yeah, yeah. Whew, okay, that was took me a second because the whole time I was like, okay, this is gonna be like a boss monster or something, and then I was like, no, it's it's a no, monkey. Sure. It's, it's a mallet monkey. monkey. Yeah, people made memes about this. I believe there was a a dork dragoon animatic about this where the three <laughs> monkeys ganged up on a guy and then it went to the Persona 5 of like split red screen <laughs> with the black foreground <laughs> and I'm like yeah mallet <laughs> monkey that's my guy dude that's there fantastic lost memes about this guy it's, it's fantastic that's great all right well for yeah. those of you watching did you guess it right uh mm -hmm. you know we'll be we'll be doing this every time so next episode <laughs> I will be the one choosing a card you know, I did not realize this. how hard this would actually be. Now I'm kind of worried about my turn. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> if I pick something from the Japanese ten, races, ten years of me asking questions. But you're the geo guesser of Shadowverse, so you'll be fine. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I am the geo guesser of Shadowverse, but it's yeah. a bit harder. I think uh, when, you'll be good. You know, I haven't played the JP meta, so. Well, but you know the cards. <laughs> you know the cards. All right. Um, so that was, that was our guessing the card segment. So did you get it? Did you play along? I think uh, definitely invite everyone in the chat and in the comments to uh, also, yeah. if you're watching this on YouTube, to play along as well. And if you're also listening digitally, I mean, it's the questions are completely, you know, through uh, sound only. So, yeah, he's the player. And let us know if you guessed it faster or slower than Chris. Are you more of a geo guesser than Chris? Yeah. Let's find out. <laughs> that's, a, that's an easy feat. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, uh, another topic I really wanted to talk about uh, over on the first half of the podcast. By the way, just a quick reminder, this podcast is split into two halves. This is the second half. The first half is over on Different Fights channel. If you're listening on audio, uh, it's, it's you know, scroll back. It's the first half of the <laughs> what you're listening to right now. Uh, but we did uh, predictions for GP Chiba over on Chris's half. Yep. But now um, I want to talk about what are our predictions for Grand Showdown Los Angeles. It's happening in literally like eight days. So pretty soon... And the set six meta is roaring. And yep. I wanna I wanna get your insight as somebody who played in JP. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of my own uh insight as somebody like in deep knee deep in the English meta and like how the like, innovations are happening on top of this. So yeah, well uh first of all, I guess what do you think is gonna be the most popular deck? I think there's kind of one obvious answer. <laughs> yeah, I think it's there's no two ways about yeah. it. I think it has to be Kuan that's gonna be the most most broad deck. It's simply mm. just, you know. It's by far the most consistent. It has like the most like ticking time bomb game plan that uh, I think brings it success. 
So mm-hmm. I really, I, I feel like that it, it has to be Kuan that's most popular. What do you think is going to be most popular? I, I think it is Kuan. I agree with you. And I, 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 by the way, guys, I also did a video with Red Zone Rug over on the official Shadowverse of All oh, yeah. channel where we also talked about sort of our predictions for this meta. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Kuan for sure is going to be the most popular deck, especially because uh, in, in, J- in JP, eventually Curse Crafter got, um, got uh, restricted. But in, in English, that has not happened yet. So like, the fact that you have access to the full Curse Crafter package to just completely wipe boards with, with such efficiency is, is so huge for Kuan. It's, it's sort of made the meta, in at least in my area, uh, a little bit interesting where... It's just kind of Kuan and decks that can rush Kuan, and that's yeah, kind of that's it. that's gonna uh, happen. That's gonna happen. Yeah, so uh, I think Kuan for sure most popular, but because that's the sort of uh, layout of how the format is going right now here, I'm kind of excited to see if Sanguine is gonna make an appearance, for example. Just because it's like really like, fast. They got re- new tools recently, like with the mm-hmm. Antelope Help Warrior and the um. Of course, Artagavi is kind of cool too. So yeah. that's one thing I'm interested in. I think Sword is is probably going to be okay as well because of that too. Um, I think, but for sure, I mean, like, like I'm saying, these guys, they're jobbers. Uh, the, the one that's <laughs> for real is uh, Amatas is definitely going to make an appearance for sure. I mm. think like that guy is super super strong. Yeah. I will say in my local scene, people have been doubting Amatas. They're like, I think it's kind of bad, but I don't know. I think I think players are going to be bringing Amatas. Um, even if the Indonesian team did not love it. So. <laughs> this is in LA after all, right? Yeah, right. It is in LA. Right, right, right. For sure. And and that's one of the fun things about physical card games and just that like in different areas, people play differently and people play different decks. So mm. that's always a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I definitely I guess agree. the other thing that we can, we can predict is like in top eight, like top eight split prediction. Like, like what do you think? All right. I'm going to ask you a question that I think will, will help to uh, progress on this one. Sure. Over, under four Kuans. I'm going to predict exactly four. Exactly four? Exactly four. One for each of the quarterfinals and top eight. Uh, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. The elite yeah. four that people have to progress past. <laughs> or you just match the four cool ones into each other and then... Oh, but good. then you, 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 have, you have a confirmed cool one in finals then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think... I'm going to say... It's like... I feel like it's either gonna be we have a bunch of kuans or we're gonna have very little kuans where it's like either mm. everyone has built things to beat it and then it just becomes like a festival of everybody playing different stuff and like having to play against each other is kuan text without facing kuan and then kuan reign supreme or yeah, it's gonna be yeah. opposite where everyone just b- brings kuan kind of thing so i i'm gonna dare to say under four under four lock yeah it like in. a three yeah. like a two or three kuans three. yeah just because I think, I think it's one of those things where like it's such an obvious like target, you know, yeah, yeah. like it's like this is the guy, so let's play around the guy. That's the thing. But the, my my problem is that because Curse Crafter is so efficient in removing, I feel like a lot of the the rogue decks that could otherwise contest it are like just kind of blocked by mm. by and it's like tough to build a board to to and and to out aggro them in, in in tempo at least because of curse crafter yeah whereas like they can just go from curse crafter into kuan it's like okay well smoge <laughs> should have played a burn deck so it's like exactly. those that, uh, uh i find it i am thinking it's like gonna be exactly four yeah that is the prediction you know? okay so i guess so, i mean in, in jp like how, what was the field like like was there a lot of like anti kuan tech happening in 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 the jp tournaments when this meta was out so during this specific meta, um, I'm actually looking through the the uh, the GP that happened during that time. We had one. I'm looking at the. So this was. I think this was a very interesting meta because it was quite early in the in the set's lifetime. So hmm. we had. I'm looking at the top eight right now. We have first person is on. Um, okay, I guess I can actually pop this up. Technically, it might be a bit sure. easier this way. So the first person here. Uh, that won the whole thing is Fidu. He won with Amataz. Ah, and then second Alice. place was Alice Haven. Then third oh, place, we have Tibun. He was also Amataz. No Kuan in top three, I see. And the last uh, top four player is also Amataz. No Kuan in top four. Okay. And then we've got Galmu here in, in top eight, the first player Yo, of the top Kuan eight. Fraud? Fraudulent? <laughs> then we got not Abyss. I actually want to take a look at... Not in top five? 
What a business. Is the Abyss Penguin? Is it is indeed. Yep. I called it. I yep. think I predicted this one. Yep. And then we've got oh actually this is uh no name. He's he's been around for a while. He's a big Haven player, so he's also playing Haven. Just want to check which type of Haven. Okay, he was on he was on Alice as well. That makes sense. It is the strongest Haven deck at the moment. And then this was the lone uh the lone rune. So you can see here, this is like early concepts of uh of Kuon from from very early. Goodness gracious. So there's only one Kuon in the top eight in that format? Yep. So it's ma majorly mm. forced. But as you said, it was early on in the format as well, which is kind of the opposite because Grand Showdown is like near the tail end of set six. So I Yeah, mean, so last yeah. year's Chiba was uh basically this was my my boy Nini. Nini won with Kuon in this one. This this one Kuon was very much um the top deck. So I'll actually show the list is much easier here. So oh, there you go, yeah. Nini won with Kuon. Second and this was place. just after Idol Master, you said? Yeah. Hmm. So then Surrey, Surrey uh, was with um. So this is where you start to see the Adam Master decks. We're gonna kind of, yeah. kind of like jump ahead. Engawa, of course. The he's um. If you if you've been to Tokyo and you go to a certain card shop that stocks evolve very strongly, yeah. he's the guy working there. Yeah. So he's the strongest card shop evolve card yeah, shop. Lots worker. of Idol Master in the top eight here. Like I'm seeing like mostly Idol Master and, and a Kuan. <laughs> You got the Kuans. Hey, here's more Kuan. This is actually Kuan. This is an alt art that Japan has. Um, yeah, yeah. This is also Kuan. More Kuan. Kuan. And more Kuan. So, so you think that because the other one was a little early in the format, you think that like because this one is late and it's after JP, we might see more Kuan than the other format would like. Like the previous tournament you showed would would otherwise imply like. People kind of figured out the Kuan list by this point. So people yeah, I, I think like... it wasn't discovered yet um, by the first GP. And that's why you have such a different form, such a different format. But it's like you know you can't ignore Amataz and Alice. Like I think Alice, especially, we've been kind of forgetting in the discussion. So I would definitely not be surprised like, to see like two Fabled Havens in top eight at least. I'm gonna say, calling it here: four Kuans, two eggs, one Amataz. And one sanguine. I'm gonna well, call it right now. <laughs> not believing in Galmu. Come on, bro. Who, who are you? I'm sorry, <laughs> but like I like Galmu, but um, in my local scene, maybe I'm being influenced. I'm being badly influenced <laughs> here, but my local scene does not believe in her. I'm Damn. like one of the only people at the store playing her right now. <laughs> wow. Like... <laughs> I think. Uh, so I'll, I'll go with three Kuan on my prediction. Mm -hmm. I'll do three Kuan, two eggs. Put on medium low high like medium right, high right. heat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um so I got three Kuan, two eggs. I'm gonna give one to Amataz. I'm gonna give one to Sanguine and one to Galmu. You are um, you are a believer. I'm a believer. Did I I <laughs> I played her all the time during this meta and I know that she can beat Kuan. It's like you just you just have to have the the right amount of prep, have the right game plan and the right deck build. I think that's going to be a big deciding factor is like who actually, you know, like I feel like deck build in this meta is very, very important. That's why I see these Kuan yeah. lists like so teched out with all these like one ofs that are just so huge in the matchups because Merlin can search them. So I do think deck building skill is very important in this current English format. And mm. uh, I think that's going to be a very big deciding factor in this Grand Showdown, especially. Well, I'm excited to see it. And uh, this is the, the big one, the big dub. Yeah. Who is going to win? Ooh, you want to go first? I'm going to say it. America. Bellaboo is from America. Second okay. Second place in the world. Forest, Maine. Yeah. Bring it now. Forest wins this one. Home turf advantage. Damn. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I. So, because this is the only Grand Showdown of this format, and the BCS season mostly kicks off with. I think there might be like I need to check the schedule later, but um, I think majority of BCSs will be Idolmaster and and uh, Verdant Steel. Mm. Um, so I I want to say that it's going to be an American player, but I do think Kuan is going to take it this time. Okay. I feel like yeah, I mean, I, fair enough. I feel like 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 you said because like people people can uh, pick up on the text that Japan ended up discovering. You know, mm. like it's gonna, it's going to definitely be more Kuan. Then the the tournament that you showed there was only one in top eight. I feel like that's, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. So let us know your predictions in the comments as well if you're watching this on on YouTube. 
I think it's definitely going to be interesting to to look at what what's going to be uh, doing well there. And you didn't choose Cal Mew as the winner, I notice. Yeah, I, <laughs> so I think Cal Mew has a good matchup into both Forest and Kuan. So if the bracket goes the right way, I think it's pretty good. I think one deck we're kind of forgetting is Control Abyss. I think Control Abyss is very nasty in this format against everything el everything else, basically. So. It's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. I think it's gonna I be used, very exciting. Used tool for that deck too, so like, I, yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, and that's kind of why I like this format. Is that even though there's like this one big boogeyman, it's still wide enough that you can you can still figure something out. Yeah, like about it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So definitely very excited to see where things go. But yeah, that is our predictions for Grand Showdown. Again, let us know in the comments what you guys expect to, and of course, tune into the stream to see how things will actually pays out and what the top eight will be. We'll review the results of the Grand Showdown during the next episode. It's gonna for be. Sure. Fun to look back at and uh, kind of uh, see, you know, those players. Some of them will have worlds invites as well. So, can be I think the the earliest worlds invites. Well, next to to, to Daniel, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he's in. <laughs> yeah, he's in. But this will be the first, the next people to join. Mm -hmm. So, it's gonna be very exciting. Yeah. All right, Igni. I know that Dan Daniel's gonna be watching. Like, oh, who am I gonna be playing against? Yeah, like, right. Gotta see. Sure. Gotta scout the competition uh, half a year in advance. <laughs> <laughs> he is a. If there's anything I know about Daniel, he's a. He's a like absolute. He's in the weeds. He's grinding like he loves every game. event he can play. So like he, he yeah. will be tuning in. I, I guarantee it. So that's good. That's good. Yep. Okay. All right, Igni. Well, guys, we're we're about to wrap up the episode, but first. We want to have a little bit of community interaction on this podcast because your feedback does mean a lot to us. Uh, so we're going to have this segment called Comment Corner where we highlight a couple of comments uh, from the comment of this podcast. But because this is the first episode, uh, we're going to talk about a bit of the uh, comments that were left on the Ambassador videos on the official Shadowverse Evolve channel. If you guys didn't know, over on the Shadowverse Evolve English Edition channel, me, Chris, and Kel made a bunch of different videos that you should all check out. They're all fire. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's a lot of them were like us fighting the Japanese ambassadors, but there was also Open 8, Pack Battle. It's, it's really a good time. So if you're not subscribed yet to the Shadowverse Evolve channel, make sure you do so and uh, tune in for, for more content like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, first of all, um, when, when we were in Japan, oh, you're always in Japan. When I was <laughs> in Japan, uh, we did a ambassador shot on, like I said, against the Japanese Shadowverse Evolve ambassadors, and they were a lot of fun. Yep. And over on the ambassador showdown, when it was Chris versus Yuiko, we have this comment over here by Kastan Ha. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. Really love this type of videos where Chris taps into the Japanese community and brings people from that side to interact with everyone here. I said this a couple of times before, but I hate when people mystify the Japanese community instead of seeing them as fellow players of the same game. And I know that that was a big mission for you with this podcast as well, so I thought that really resonated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I guess like when we did our ambassador intros for the very first time, last year that was like kind of like one of my things i mentioned too is like i really want to help to bridge the japanese english communities and i'm really glad that you know castan also felt that way too with the comment very very sweet you know just very nice to see people like you know watch a youtube video and that be the thing that they want to like you know because writing a comment on a video in the first place unless you're like prompted to do it is always like a bit of effort right so for them to go through that and like leave that kind of message is also very sweet of them so thank you very much to castan for that comment but on the other side uh, when Igni played against uh, Ryo-san for his ambassador showdown, this one is a little less a little less heartwarming, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's still very cool. It's coming from a uh, Rion Skyridge. So they wrote Ryo out here with Daria, Daria leader and Takion sleeves. Mad respect. Those are two of my favorite Runecraft followers. I mean, this is some... also just the benefit of like showing the Japanese ambassadors to the English side. Like you yeah. get you get new people to root for, you know, for sure. And like uh, Rio and Yuiko and and uh, they're, they're always on the the evolve um, channel streams as well. Mm. So like you know, it, it's important to know who they are. Like they're a big part of our game. So mm -hmm. you know, the fact that we can we can sort of present you to them in in such a way on an official capacity on the evolve channel is, is very nice. And I will say yeah, Daria, Daria and Takion, yeah, very popular characters. <laughs> like there it is. For sure, for sure. And I think for the next episode's common showcase, I think we could even we could make it into a little bit of a challenge for the folks watching. The sure. person who gets the closest prediction to the top eight uh, split gets gets the feature. So we, we'll we'll <laughs> do like a top three. We'll do like a top three closest predictions. Sure. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And and we'll also, uh, I do want to say, uh, this is the first episode of the podcast, so please do leave your feedback in the comments yeah. so we could improve on what you'd like to see from us, what you'd like us to cover. Uh, the sort of layout of this show was was loosely Japanese news over on Chris's side and English news over on my side. But if there's any other like segments that you'd, you'd want us to include or if there's something that maybe we missed, uh, yeah. please do let us know and we'll improve the podcast over time for sure. So your feedback is very valuable. I literally do read every comment for better or for worse. Some days it's for better <laughs> yeah. for many days it's worse, but <laughs> uh, let's find out. Uh, please do comment down below, as I said, about that as well. And uh, yeah, I guess that uh, other than that, that's it for this uh, this podcast. Thank you for listening to the first episode of EX Area, a Shadowverse yeah. of All podcast. Once again, a reminder to please follow both Ignidius on YouTube yep. and Different Fight on YouTube as well, because each yep, episode uh... of the podcast will be split into <laughs> these two halves, and uh, they're, they're, it's, it's all important. So, so make sure to check that out. Because even if you only play the English side, listen, the Japanese side is going to become the English side. It just takes a matter of time. So if exactly. you do want to be listening in exactly. to what's happening over on that end too. Uh, so yes, uh, Ignidius on YouTube, different fight on YouTube. Subscribe to both. Make sure you tune in for more Evolve goodness. And yep. if you're on Spotify, please do rate the podcast. We do appreciate that. Uh, yeah, that, that's it for, for us. Like, uh, any final words, Chris, that you want to say? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's really nice that we finally kind of like got this lifted off. I think it's been mm -hmm. a long time coming. And uh, yeah. I hope people also enjoy it. And especially just have another avenue to listen to us kind of talk about the game. Because I think a lot of people, you know, we, we do have, you know, we, we put out videos for the game quite a bit. But we do have, you know, a lot of other kind of like restrictions to work with along the way as we as we put things out. So I think this gives us a really nice way to just kind of like talk about the game in general, which I think, For you sure, know, yeah. it always helps to have that kind of like uh, to hear thoughts about, you know, both sides of the game, both sides of the community and kind of bring it all together. So I hope you guys enjoy the podcast. As Igni said, give us your feedback as uh, this is, you know, a work in progress together with the community. And yeah, uh, sure. hopefully we'll see you guys next month for episode two as we take a look at, you know, the Grand Showdown the Chiba GP, look up at, you know, all the other cool releases and all the other things happening in the Shadowverse Evolve world. So that's going to be it for this first episode of the EX area. And we hope to see you back here again next month for episode two. We'll see you there. Bye.